Hello everyone, I'm Sophie and I'm currently at Kachara Forest Retreat, Bentong, Malaysia. And this is the book that I'm reading from, Tales My Lama Told Me. This is by Pastor David Lai and these are the stories of um, told by Rinpoche, our guru, his uh, eminence, the 25th Sam Tuku Rinpoche. Today I'll be reading chapter 20, Loud Mouth Lama. It's a very interesting chapter. And this is the Lama, Kenso Ngawang Nima. Okay, page, chapter 20, Loud Mouth Lama, page 216. And this comment <coughs> is by Pastor David. Rinpoche told his students that respect in the monastery cannot be bought with money. It doesn't even come when one is given the title Rinpoche. He said that it comes with a lot of tears, hard work and dedication towards others. It was an amazing message to encourage his students to do more and to express their beliefs through action. This message was also what a Mongolian Lama tried to tell Rinpoche when he first entered the monastery. The following is the story of how they met and the enduring conversations that they shared. And now Rinpoche tells, I am so fortunate because these days I have enough to eat and I have enough money to live on. I also have a very nice car to get around with, a comfortable home and people's respect. It is actually more than just respect. I even have people prostrating to me and give me, giving me gifts all the time. You may think that this that it is because I am a Rinpoche, but I tell you no. Trust me, it's not because I am a Rinpoche. If it was because I am a Rinpoche, I would have been much wealthier by now and everything would be fine for me. I would have no troubles at all. I think I have all that I have now because I put a lot of effort into others and people do recognize that. It is a universal human quality that I have realized that we have to depend on other people. This brings to mind one high lama that I met many years ago. His name was Kenso Ngawang Ningma Rinpoche of Drepung Goma Monastery. And he was Mongolian. I met this great lama in 1988 and he gave me a very simple and practical piece of advice. He said to me, when you go to Ganden, you had better study. He was very old at that time and was a teacher to one of my lamas. He was a Mongolian geshe and a great ex-abbot of Drepung Gongma Monastery. He was one of the few people who dared to scold the Dalai Lama during teachings. He would be seated on a cushion on the floor and the Dalai Lama would be on his throne. There would be hundreds of people in the audience receiving teachings and sometimes midway, the Dalai Lama would appear to have forgotten something. He would ask the audience, what scriptures was that quoted from? I can't remember where this was from. Do any of you Geshe's or abbots remember? All the abbots remained quiet except this old Mongolian monk who was the abbot at the time, a skinny and frail man with little thin, thin arms who answered confidently, it is from this text on this page and this paragraph. The Dalai Lama was delighted and said, oh yes, that's right. Then this abbot would say to him, isn't it there? Isn't it like that? In a sort of respectful scolding. The Dalai Lama would reply politely, Oh yes, yes, because this abbot was so old and such a great teacher. On top of that, he was also the tutor to the Dalai Lama's brothers. The Dalai Lama has three brothers, two of whom are Rinpoches, who studied under Kenso Rinpoche. He was such a great master and very famous for that. He even taught the Dalai Lama. Of course, he wasn't really scolding the Dalai, Dalai Lama during those teachings. But he was known for being hot tempered for being a hot tempered Mongolian. So he could be very direct. He was the only one who would dare point at the Dalai Lama and say, Isn't it there? 
and the Dalai Lama would take it gracefully. This also reflects the humility of the Dalai Lama. It shows you what a great master he is, and his actions really do reveal his inner qualities. I had the opportunity to meet this Lama once. He came to see me and told me that since I am a Mongolian, I should go to Drepong Goma Monastery and not stay in Ganden Shatze Monastery. He was really very direct and screamed at me when I told him, No, I'm not. <laughs> I was not fa fa Sorry, I was not fazed by his screaming. Instead, I told him that I was not going anywhere. I was going to stay in Ganden Shatze. He told me that there was no such tradition of Mongolian ever, ever enrolling in Ganden Shatze. Since there were no Mongolians in Ganden, then I must go to Drepong Gomma like all Mongolians do. He was screaming, you must come to Drepong Gomma. At the time, there were actually a few monasteries that were fighting for me to join them. Finally, he warned, nothing good will come to you if you go there. I dismissed it, but then he added, if you go there, six-armed Mahakala won't leave you alone. So I retorted, if six-armed Mahakala doesn't leave me alone, then he doesn't have any compassion. <laughs> Frustrated, he screamed, Oh, what a big mouth! Then he scolded me. Such a big mouth! You have no manners at all! Young monks like you shouldn't talk back like that! I told him, Well, you told me that he's going to get me. I took leave from his presence after that, and within a few minutes, he sent his attendants to call me back. He had calmed down by then, and he told me, Look, I'm a Mongolian and you're Mongolian, and that's not right, but never mind. Here's a monk shirt. You study well and I'll pray for you. I said, thank you, Rinpoche. It was a very funny scenario and he was very fierce, but he had a very kind heart. Just before I left, he told me, if you don't study, I will ignore you. He told me to visit him from time to time, so I did. He would sit there with an ear cupped with one hand because he had a hearing problem and shared advice with me. Once he told me, let me make it very simple for you. He probably thought I was quite stupid, so he really made it simple for me. If you practice hard and if you study the Dharma, when you're old, people will still feed you. Now go and study hard. I thought about it. And I realized how much people respected him, how people would offer him countless gifts, and how even the Dalai Lama respected him tremendously. The Dalai Lama's brothers studied under him and became great masters along with countless people to whom he offered refuge and assistance. When I think of him, tears well up in my eyes because I, was, I am so moved by him. He was such a fierce and hot-tempered man, which made him a very difficult person to serve because he was so direct, but he was also extremely kind, knowledgeable, and was such a renowned Dharma master. I was very sad when he passed away. I remember that I used to see him quite often, and every time I went to see him, I would get a scolding. It was very rare that he would say anything nice to me, but he had a heart of gold. Every time he scolded, shouted, or screamed at me, he would also give me a gift. So you can see what a kind person he was. He was a highly respected lama in Switzerland, and when he was first invited to Switzerland, everybody loved him. People re requested him to give many teachings during the 60s and 70s when he was living there. However famous he was, though, he didn't have a nice house. He had nothing to his name, and he preferred to remain like that. He collected a lot of donations from teaching abroad and gave it all to the monastery. Then he went back to the monastery and gave teachings to the monks instead. He felt that a lot of young monks wanted to become geshes and teachers, but there were not enough teachers training them. So he went back to teach them. In that way, he lived his whole life teaching. He continued to live 
live in the small quarters of the monastery provide sorry he continued to live in the small quarters the monastery provided for him and never built his own house despite his status he never had a big residence he just concentrated on teaching the monks the whole monastery respected him very much and loved him dearly whenever he walked around senior monks would come to assist him while most ordinary monks would run and hide it is tibetan etiquette that if you meet a high master you don't just stand there proudly like an equal you are supposed to hide if you do run into them on the streets and you can't escape then you keep your head low and fold your hands it is in our tradition to respect someone by being quiet and submissive not by staring at them directly so when this grand old lama stepped out onto the street everybody would just disappear and in a flash the monastery would appear to be deserted evidently the monks had a lot of respect for him i still do that is why i have placed a black and white picture of him in our kachara paradise store he is also a great geshe from drepung gomma so when people see him they will be blessed just seeing his photo will give us many blessings because of who he is when i was at the monastery i saw many examples of such eminent masters and i always remember clearly what they have so kindly advised and shared with me Kenso Rinpoche advised me to study the dharma so that when I was I am old I will still have something to eat as people will feed me. He even told me all this in Mongolian as I was still conversant in Mongolian at that time although I have largely forgotten most Mongolian words now. His advice may sound very basic and ordinary but actually it is quite deep. I realize that I am I am not like him at all but I do appreciate that people provide for me give me give me food donate money and help me to accomplish things not only because I know and teach them to the dharma but because of the effort I have put towards them so you get in return what you have put in if you can only think about yourself then you are selfish When you are selfish you don't push yourself to make a difference you don't improve you don't create awareness you always run away and in the end you don't gain anybody's respect if no one respects you you will definitely not be happy even if you have a lot of food and money you will not be happy because all of us need more than just food and money we need social interaction we are in interdependent and that is a simple fact of life if you care for others people will care for you in return if you do not care for others you will not be happy so if you think deeply what is it that really makes us unhappy depressed or even to hate ourselves it really is our selfishness all this is very logical and painful painfully clear from his advice and so there you go another lesson from rinpoche during his mon- monastic time and as <laughs> you know rinpoche always relate stories in a very funny way but the thing is um there is a very serious lesson you know every time and as rinpoche said that we are interdependent on each other no matter how much we wish to be alone we still need others to be there because i mean even living you know you will need someone to sell you groceries so that you can eat well in order for the grocery to be there you need some other people to do the production and all that and so forth so the chain is there and we need to rely on each other for living so as such that is why our lives are interdependent on each other and also you know what you as rinpoche said you know what you give out um then you may receive but the thing is uh, all this unhappiness is basically created because of our own ego 
which we expect certain things to come back to us or we expect um, we expect things certain things to go that way of how our ideas are you know it's all basically our expectations and um, so that is why we make ourselves unhappy so the easiest way is to always work for others so don't, that you don't focus on yourself you know and your selfishness so that is the same that's what Rinpoche is saying Okay, so thank you for sharing your time with me and I'll be doing another chapter in my next sharing. Please do join me. So now we'll do this, uh, we'll end this with a completion dedication in Tibetan. Daso jini sa pagi wadi tandan dro ago na kampadang je pa jesu no sentra pai tamping important to sa se sho ke wa kuntu yon na la madan dro mi choki pa la lo choche sa dam nang yin yo te ra zo ne do je chang yin o pa ngo tu su ke wa di yo do da la ma sang yo dro yo ne dro wa chi ke ma lu pa de i sa la go pa sho cho ke ke pa sung ka pa cho su nam pa pe wa la ke ki sa ma si wa da dong ki ma lu sang wa sho da dam sing do su da dre we song yi la te ne ke wa lo sentra pai tam pa yo re va gyu shi ni Home to be not to Malupa, then the Dalla sell do so, go down them palong shot now, keep us so shake shook then sell. Thank you again and see you for my next sharing.